Preface to the Boardroom Edition This book was first published in 1966, what seems to be three lifetimes ago. It sold only a few thousand copies. But since it was published I have had people coming to me regularly to tell me that they directly credit reading this book with their making millions of dollars. This is amazing enough, but even more remarkable is the fact that when I look back on it not a single one of these people was a copywriter. Here is a book that is called Breakthrough Advertising and yet was used by men who were not in the business of advertising at all to make more money than most of us ever dream of accumulating. How did this happen? Why was a publisher, a financier, a manufacturer of novelties, able to make so very much money with a book that is about putting sentences together? The financier told me that, within one year after obtaining the book, he had raised his net worth from $100,000 to $10 million. Are the sentences contained in the pages that follow actually that powerful? Can they change the fortunes of men so radically? Are they far more universally adaptable than I had first thought? So they are no longer about advertising products, but literally about opening whole new markets for them. Therefore, 18 years later, when Boardroom Books asked me to republish this text, I had to study it again, with the fresh eyes of a person who had not read it in all the time, to see what was the real content of my book, and its real effect on its readers. I did. I discovered the secret. And I am using this introduction now, to admit my red face shame. What I had thought I had written those many years ago was a book on advertising, what I actually put down on these pages was an entirely different book, on a far broader theme, there is a way to develop an entirely new market for a newer and old product. That way involves a certain number of clearly defined steps. And in this book I show you every single one of those steps. No matter what official designation we give the industry we do business in, we actually do business on a deeper level. We are all simply creating or exploiting markets for our products. When the market is born, our business is simultaneously given birth. When it grows so does our share of it. When it is mature, our sales charts develop their first aches and pains. And at that point, if we can develop a fresh new market for that old product, it is exactly as if we achieved the Fustian dream and enabled that product to drink from the proverbial fountain of youth. We are all primarily conceptual midwives, helping give birth to new markets for our products. All the other functions we or our business perform the manufacturing, distribution service, financing, and all the rest are simply adjuncts to this vital essential process. We are, in a single phrase, market makers. We sense each new market in its turn. We test and evaluate its size and scope. We gauge its true potential financial strength, and then we focus all the people, all the money and all the desire that makes it up on one ultimate object, our own product. Most of the time, the market exists before our product, and we simply tap its present strength. But, in this era of constant change, we ourselves may help give it its first viable financial form. We may sense that people want computers in their homes as well as their offices, or want to walk around all day with music plugged into their ears, or would like to spend three air-conditioned hours in a faraway galaxy, battling with light swords against evil and tyranny. Making a market, then, is not, as I thought when I originally wrote this book, simply a matter of making an ad. It is also the making of a product. And it is the making of a conduit, through which that product can be obtained by the people, whom you have made desire it more than an equivalent sum of their money. This book outwardly talks about the sentences that make up the primary appeal of that product to that market. But its true and deeper message is found when it is interpreted as a market diviner and a market intensifier. In other words, its message will show you how to find your dream market and how to drive it into a national feeding frenzy. And I have also made an equally important discovery upon reviewing this book since it was first published. The examples in its pages have grown slightly older, but the principles that these examples manifest are timeless. For example, if I were writing this book today, its examples would show more appreciation of feminism, environmental awareness, health and fitness striving even the blessed sexual revolution they would be more open and more frank than they could have been then. All this is for the good but this book is not about reviewing today's ads, but creating from scratch tomorrow's winners. This book is about avoiding the need for copying or imitating another product or advertisement. So today's examples are as outdated as those of two decades ago. This book is about what happens next and the fundamental rules of making a fortune out of slightly redirecting that tomorrow. You see, people don't change, only the direction of their desires do. They cannot be made to want anything, nor is it necessary to create want. All that is necessary is to be able to channel those wants into the proper products that offer legitimate satisfaction for them. It takes 10 million, 50 million, 25 million, 50 million, 150 million people to create a vast market for your goods. But it takes only one slip off paper or its recitation by a series of salesmen to direct all those millions of people to your stores or your catalogs or your wholesalers. Not one single thing has changed in that regard since I wrote this book. Nor will it ever alter in the slightest. So this book is not about building better mousetraps. It is, however, about building larger mice, and then building terrifying fear of them in your customers. In other words, it is about helping to shape the largest and strongest market possible, and then intensifying the market's reaction to its basic need or problem, and to the exclusive solution you have to offer it. Dash Ask Rodale Press, for whom I sold over $20 million of a single book, The Practical Encyclopedia of Natural Healing Dash Ask the publisher of this book, Boardroom Reports, Incorporated, who started out with $3,500 in total working capital, and who will probably do more than $25 million in gross volume next year, with I am proud to say at least a little bit of assistance from me Dash Ask the 17 businesses I've started or helped start. 25% of just one of them was sold for close to a million dollars in one day. These principles work. They discover markets. They build markets. They intensify markets. They revitalize markets. They perform, in some, the invaluable function of giving you customers for the products you want or have to sell. And that's what we all need, isn't it? Customers. This, therefore, is a book full of customers for your products. It is really nothing else.
Just customers, by the millions. I have several millionaires, and multi-millionaires, to my credit now. I'd like to make the next one you. Gene Schwartz Breakthrough Advertising Introduction Creativity can be made to order, if you follow the simple rule, if you expect a scholarly tome on advertising, stop here. I am a mail order copywriter who makes his living, by producing results in carefully measured dollars of profit from the written word. My income, my standard of living depends bluntly and directly upon my ability to sell. And I have no salesman to help me, no store reputation to help me, no point of purchase reminders, no discounts, no friendly sales clerks to give my products a push. I sell, or do not sell, on the basis of one tool alone my ad. Therefore, I have done a great deal of thinking and experimenting with these ads. And, since I have had the good fortune to own my own mail order firms for the last 11 years, I have had far greater freedom than most copywriters to put my ideas to a conclusive test and to see whether or not they really work. I believe, as do many other advertising men, that mail order is the greatest copywriting school in the world. In mail order for reasons, which I'll reveal later in this book, you learn techniques and approaches to copy especially new product and new slant copy that you learn in no other branch of this business. I have explained these techniques in detail in the hope that they will prove as profitable to other copywriters as they've been for me. Can they be used by non-mail order copywriters as well? Most assuredly. J.K. Lasker once said that mail order makes a copywriter, but his real payoff comes when he applies his mail order techniques to general advertising. I think that BBD and O, Dash Ted Bates, Dash Ogilvy, Young and Rubicum and a dozen other agencies prove this every day. Therefore I've written this book not from the mail order perspective alone but from the universal problem of all copywriting, how to write a headline in an ad that follows it that will open up an entirely new market for its product. An ad that will give a new product immediate profit, that will give an old product a brand new slant, that will give a competitively battered product a new weapon not only to protect itself against its imitators, but to actually damage or destroy the loyalty of their following. These objectives cannot be achieved by following somebody else's formula no matter how successful it was for them they demand creativity they demand a brand new headline, dash a brand new approach to the market a literal advertising breakthrough. Hence the title of this book. This, then, is a practical book of practical rules that produce and exploit creativity and that are meant to pay off on the very first ad. To put them to work, you start with these basic facts. Basic facts of life for copywriters writing copy is like playing the stock market or being an atomic physicist. Basically all three of these professions copywriting, speculation and science are exactly alike. The same keys make each one of them work. And if you realize why you can double the effectiveness of your copy overnight. Consider these facts, all three of them deal with immense natural forces gargantuan forces thousands of times more powerful than the men who use them. In science, they are the fundamental energies of the universe. In speculation, they are the billion dollar tides and currents of the marketplace. In copywriting there are the hopes and fears and desires of millions upon millions of men and women all over the world. The men who use these forces did not create them, they can neither turn them on nor shut them off they can neither diminish them nor add to them. But they can harness them. Dash the scientist did not create the energy of the sun, but he can direct the energy into the explosion of an atom bomb. Dash the speculator did not create the enormous growth of the electronics industry after the war, but he can ride that growth to produce a 50 times increase in his capital. Dash and the copywriter does not create the desire of millions of women all over America to lose weight, but he can channel the desire onto a particular product and make its owner a millionaire. This, then, is the end goal to take these gigantic natural forces and harness them to our own uses. But how do we do it? No two of these forces are alike. Each is unique, each operates in a different way. Dash the same formula, carefully worked out to release atomic energy, fails complete to solve the problem of rocket propulsion. Dash the same pattern of investment, that spots the upturn in electronics and makes a fortune, loses that fortune in uranium. Dash and the same advertising appeal, that builds an industry and reducing, collapses completely when applied to health foods, even though both advertisements may reach exactly the same audience. Why? Because no formula works twice. Each and every formula is simply the written solution to a particular problem, that occurred in the past. Change even one part of that problem, and you need an entirely different formula. That's why memorizing theories won't make you a scientist, or studying charts won't make you a market wizard, or rewriting somebody else's headlines won't make you a copywriter. What will work? Innovation, of course. Continuous, repeated innovation. A steady stream of new ideas, fresh new solutions to new problems. Created not by the impossible root of memory but by analysis. In a field in which the rules are constantly changing where the forces that determine the outcome are constantly shifting, where new problems are constantly being encountered everyday rules, formulas and principles simply would not work. They are too rigid too tightly bound to the past. They must be replaced by the only known method of dealing with the constantly new analysis. And what is analysis? It is a series of measuring rods, checkpoints, signpost questions that show you where a particular force is going and enable you to get there first. It is a series of rough guesses based on past successes that enables you to cut through the surface of a problem to see what makes it tick. Analysis is the art of asking the right questions and letting the problem dictate the right answers. It is the technique of the breakthrough. And it can be learned just as surely as grammar, mathematics or spelling. The first part of this book is about analysis, applied to the profession of copywriting. Its basic thesis is this, every new market, every new product, every new advertisement is a fresh new problem that never existed before on the face of this earth. Past advertising successes no matter how brilliant can provide no answers for this new problem. They can only furnish jump-off points, dash yards to questions, dash approximate solutions to lead you on in the right direction. 
The correct solution, the right headline, the perfect ad lies buried in the problem itself. It has never been written before. It cannot be produced by rote, carbon copying or mutations. But it can be sprung to the surface automatically, by asking the right questions. Here, I believe, are at least some of these questions. Some of these guide posts. They are presented in the first section of this book. They are asked and answered, before you sit down at your typewriter, and they comprise the first part of your ad's headline the few simple words, that startle your prospect into attention. The remainder of that add the body copy the techniques, that lead your prospect from agreement, to desire to identification to the conviction, that he must own your product are presented in the second section. One cannot do its work without the other. Both are vital. Harnessed together, they can earn you a vice presidency, if you are security minded, or a million dollars, if you'd like to take a chance. Here they are. Good luck and good hunting. Part I The Basic Strategy of Persuasion How to Write a Winning Headline That No One Has Ever Written Before 1 Mass Desire The Force That Makes Advertising Work And How to Focus It Onto Your Product Let's Get Right Down to the Heart of the